Welcome back. Beauregard doesn't seem to have much energy anymore. All he does is lie around. Why is most fifteen years old, Missy Lillian? What do you expect? Yep, he's an old dog. Oh, there's actually one other thing we should do with Lillian. Show her the hanky. Because it might belong to her mother, and if it does, she probably knows that. It looks familiar. Big help that was. Because we found that outside of Ethel's room, just after or before, I don't really know how the time there works, considering we were in the room, um, uh, Gertie was murdered, so could be that that's uh, an indication that Ethel is the culprit. Or it could just be an indication that she was in that hallway at some point. Which doesn't mean much. Let's see what's out here. You're standing at the northeast corner of the house, right outside the kitchen. Actually, no, let's... Do that again and get the mouse out of the frame. Let's see what's out here. You're standing at the northeast corner of the house, right outside the kitchen. Beside the kitchen door, you see a doghouse and a cellar door. It's Beauregard again, in his doghouse. There's a large doghouse outside the kitchen door. You see the name Beauregard written over the doghouse door. And Beauregard himself is presently at home. Old Beauregard snoozes in his doghouse. There's also a cellar door. There appears to be a cellar door here. And it looks like a feeding bowl. You see nothing special. You can't get that. I guess not. Nice doggy. Anything in the doghouse? Besides Beauregard, I mean. Not close mm. enough. Well, well, look who's home. Beauregard. Hmm. It's interesting that the game lets you do that, though. Indicates that there might be something of interest in the doghouse other than Beauregard. Problem is, we have to get Beauregard out of there first. Mm. And that is where mm. that bone comes in handy. Okay. And off he trots. Mm. Beauregard is sure enjoying the bone. That's where we need to give him the bone. So now we can actually look in the doghouse. You peer into the dark interior of the doghouse and look around. What's this? Why, it looks like a necklace of small amethyst and quartz stones. Beauregard must have found it someplace and brought it here. You quickly grab it and take it with you. And now we have a necklace. Well, that's a pretty looking necklace. I wonder who it belongs to. No idea. Somebody on the estate, but that doesn't exactly narrow it down at the moment. I suppose we can ask uh, Lillian or Salee when we get back inside. Before doing that, though, I want to see what's in this cellar. Locked. This must be the butler's room. Actually, it's not too bad, considering it's down in the cellar. Yeah, it's kind of a cozy little uh, hole in the ground. And it looks like Jeeves is here. Oh, didn't we do that before? Apparently not. Jeeves is the Colonel's imposing butler. Though you find him somewhat good-looking, he nevertheless gives, gives off a disconcerting feeling of secretiveness. Well, he is a butler. It's kind of contractual, I think. You have noticed that Jeeves generally keeps to himself and seems to talk in little more than monosyllables. You wonder about him. Jeeves is lying on his bed. He must be trying to take a nap. And probably doesn't appreciate that we just walked into his room uninvited. 
That wall uh, next to Laura looks kind of weird. It's a brick wall. It's the only brick wall there. A portion of the back wall looks different than the rest. It appears to have been bricked up. Um, sink. It appears that Jeeves has a sink here too. And he has his own toilet as well. No idea if that will work. That's Jeeves' toilet. If you need to use one, go upstairs. Okay. Yeah. If you look at it, it you get the same message. Can we use the sink? Wash hands. Go upstairs if you want to do that. Okay. Let's stop trying to use Jeeves' things. Open dresser. Dresser. There's nothing of interest in the dresser. I think that's the same message for every dresser. Can we talk to Jeeves? I deserve a little peace and quiet in my own room. Well, you've got a point there. This is highly irregular, Miss Bow. Exasperated, Jeeves closes his eyes and tries to ignore your constant jabber. And you actually can't talk to him at all right now. You can't... Uh, Ask him about anything either. Look, uh, let's see what's on the table. Here, um, you see a box of crackers on the nightstand next to Jeeves's bed. Wait a second. Crackers? A parrot? Hmm. Let's see if we can take those. You ask Jeeves if you can, ha if you can have the crackers. He nods his head in approval. Well, that was nice of him. Seven crackers. So oh, they're limited in number. Delicious. You pop a cracker into your mouth. Hmm, quite tasty. Six crackers. Not sure if we'll need all seven, but just in case I'm going to restore. All right. Now let's go back inside. Now I actually want to. Maybe our friend's hungry. She keeps coming in here. Oh, this game is uh, getting somewhat aware of what I'm doing. Um, let's try to find out who that necklace belongs to. Let's show it to uh, Salee. She might know since she's familiar with this place. It didn't look like it would belong to any of the guests. And since it was in the doghouse, uh, Beauregard probably found it a while ago. Not close enough. Okay. My necklace! I was wondering where it got to. Well, Miss Alora, thank you. Okay, it was hers. How lucky. I'm busy. Go on with you now. She still doesn't really want to talk to us. Okay. Well, um, we just got some crackers. So I guess we should go to the parrot. You know, Polly, you really understand me, don't you? Ark, Polly, ark! Yeah. I wonder what's, uh, what Ethel's drinking, actually. Seems to be a very strong alcoholic drink. Well, the canter is still here. Upon the countertop, you see a decanter of cognac. Not sure if she's drinking cognac. Oh, you can go behind the bar. Hi there. Do you need a drink? Wait, you already have one. Um, let's see if uh, we can make Polly happy. You give a cracker to the parrot. Ark! Gonna tell him! Tell him! Race or scam! Ark! Ooh, interesting. That sounds like it might have been Wilbur, based on what we overheard. You can actually give a cracker to uh, the parrot in every act, except Act, act 1, because, well, you don't have crackers yet in Act 1. And when you do, 
Polly will reiterate a snippet of conversation it overheard. So you can uh, maybe hear some interesting stuff. Although usually you kind of lack context to really um, know what uh, he's talking about. Um, let's see. Anybody upstairs? This is Rudy and Clarence's room, I think. Oh, what's going on here? Leave me alone, you, you, you! Oh. Rudy, denied. Hmm. That was interesting. Looks like Rudy is drinking something too. You think it's bourbon? Could be. Rudy is having a drink while relaxing in his room. While relaxing, he was apparently trying to pick up Fifi and failing. You know, Laura, you're a very attractive girl. Oh, you're just moving on to the next target, are you? Are you really friends with Lillian? You don't seem to be her type. Yeah, I mean, Laura seems like a proper 20s girl, whereas Lillian is a flapper girl, so... It does seem kind of weird. I don't know. I don't know how those things... I wasn't in the 20s. I don't know how those things work. Come over here. Relax. Have a drink. No way, buddy. She didn't say that out loud, I guess, because no quotes. Don't be afraid of me. I don't bite. This might be a good time to leave. Be like that. I don't care. You've upset Rudy. He doesn't want to talk to you anymore. Well, pff, I don't care. We can still ask him about things. I've always hated this place. Can't wait to leave. Yeah. I guess he doesn't like it here. Maybe it would feel differently if uh, Fifi had reciprocated. Uncle Henri and I don't always agree on the proper way uh, which one should lead their life. But it'll soon come around. Really? Somehow I doubt that. Let's go out Lillian. You know, I've always been a little leery of her. Not sure she's all there, if you know what I mean. People keep mentioning this stuff and nobody will explain what it is. Ethel. Aunt Ethel's nothing but an embarrassment to the family. And that's quite an accomplishment, considering what family this is. They're all a bunch of characters. Ethel and Lillian? Ethel's always been a lousy drunk. She never helped Lillian one bit. So it would seem. Um, actually, Lillian seemed to imply the Colonel. She was close with the Colonel, so let's ask him about that. How would I know? Okay. Guess that's not a thing. Gloria, your sister? My sister's a swell girl. I don't like to have people say otherwise. I wasn't saying otherwise. I'm thinking otherwise, but wasn't saying it. Oh, that's in there. Sorry, I'm going off a list. <laughs> Forgot who I was talking to. Clarence, then. We would all be much better off if my uncle would just get rid of him. Considering he stole money... I um, am inclined to in gr uh, to agree. Maybe he knows Gloria and Clarence were conspiring about earlier. Stay out of my sister's affairs. Okay. Well, he does know because Gloria told him he was going to break up with Rudy, but apparently he doesn't want to talk about it. How about Wilbur? You don't want to go near that old ledge. Yeah, you're one to talk. Um, what do you know about Wilbur and Clarence? What they were up to together? I don't understand why my uncle trusts those guys. He must be getting senile. I guess so. 
It's not like any of uh, the other people here are particularly trustworthy so far. Gertie? I'm sure she's just resting in her room. And we should probably tell uh, him about her mother's death, his mother's death. Although I am betting he won't believe it. Clarence and Gertie. Don't worry about my mother. She's a tough old bird. She can take care of herself. I don't think so. Although that does remind me. Didn't Gertie threaten to tell Ethel about what Clarence was planning? Maybe that's why um, she was killed. Clarence could have uh, killed her to make sure she didn't do that. Hmm. And actually, the money problems um, he was talking about, he probably wants to solve that by selling, uh, by uh, getting that land and exploiting it, whatever. So that's what he meant when he was talking to Wilbur. The pieces are starting to fit together. It isn't really getting us any closer to the murder, but, well, we're learning stuff. And that is, after all, the point of this game. Jeeves. Hardly even notice him. He seems very quiet, don't you think? Yes, I've noticed that too. Wow, Laura talks back. That's kind of rare. Fifi. I know what she's after. I've got her completely pegged. I bet you wish you were pegging her net right now. Aren't you? Hee <laughs> hee. Dirty jokes. Um... He's an old man with money, and she's an attractive young woman who would like to have it. It's very simple, but she won't get away with it. With it. Maybe that's why he's trying to hit on her, not just because she's uh, attractive, because he wants her share of the money too. I frankly, wouldn't put it past him. You know about Lee? She kind of gives me the creeps. How about... It's Lee and Lillian. They seem to be hanging around a lot. So Lee helps to calm Lillian down when she has one of her rages. Will somebody just tell me already what's up with that and the rages and the problems that Lillian seems to be having? Everybody is alluding to that, but nobody will explain it to me. Uh, we can also ask him about the dog. What about Beauregard? I was just wondering about him, Rudy. But it seems he does not have anything useful to say about Beauregard. Um, well, I guess we should tell him about Gertie. That can't be true. Not mother! And he goes and checks. Which will be completely fruitless. A short time later. Wait, that was Fruity's voice. Um, you, you're loony, there's nothing there. And he doesn't believe it. Why am I not surprised? Um, I guess we can also show him the hanky. Maybe he knows who it belongs to. It just looks like a hanky to me. Well, that's what it is, so that's not very strange. My money, however, is still on it being Ethel's hanky. <laughs> Nearly fell. <laughs> Wasn't intending to do that. Um, I wonder if the... Door death will happen now. Nope. Still just an empty closet. Who else could we talk to? I wonder if Wilbur's back in the library. He is. And apparently, that is the start of Act 3. Which, I guess, makes this um, 
as good a time as any to continue in the next video.